Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment, disasters and several other topics related to research methodology. In this session on economic geography, we are going to learn about the secondary activities in the economy. For example, the industries and various subtypes of it. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to push the like button and share it with others as well. So now let's learn about the secondary activities in the economy. So if we learn about primary, secondary and tertiary activities in the economy, it's basically coming from this theory which is three sector model in economy or economic activities. So what is this three sector model? It divides the entire economic activity into three parts. That is basically one is extraction of raw materials which is called primary activity. Second is manufacturing that is secondary activity which we are going to learn in details in this video and service industry which exists to facilitate the transport, distribution, sale of goods produced in the secondary sector that is why it's tertiary sector. So this three sector concept or three sector model is important to understand and out of which we are learning this secondary part because in the previous lessons we have already learned about the primary activity. So this model was developed by Alan Fisher, Colin Clark and John Forestay in the first half of 20th century as a representation of industrial economy. That's important to take from here. Now, what is secondary sector? It basically takes the output of the primary sector. It means what? The primary sector contributes as a raw material source for the secondary and secondary sector does what? The processing part, right? That's how it works. So many of these countries consume large quantities of energy, require factories, use machineries, to convert the primary resources, the raw materials in order to make it fit for the market, right? For the processing. So that's important. So the secondary sector, what? It produces waste materials as well. And remember, this is one important point here in terms of environment as well, that this is the chunk of secondary sector that produces too much of environmental waste and causes environmental problems as well. So the flip side is it gives us resources, manufactures resources for us, but at the same time, there is environmental concern because of this side, right? So this is important. So example, you can see cotton textile, iron and steel and several other industries, right? So what happens? Secondary sector is dependent completely on the primary sector for its raw material supply. But secondary sector has life of its own because it's manufacturing unit. It has factory setup and also it requires capital. It requires finances. It required other supports like transportation and other logistic support. Right. That's how secondary sector operates. So secondary is, is not in itself independent. It means it is dependent on the others. That's how it works. So secondary sector is dependent sector on primary sector for the raw material as we have discussed and countries that primarily produce agricultural and other raw materials, which is basically primary sector tend to grow very slow that we have seen through economy. Right. And remain underdeveloped that we said that we also know by the name of developing economies. But remember, the countries which produce the goods out of these raw materials that is dependent upon secondary sector or domination of secondary sector or manufacturing sector, these countries become developed very fast, right? So value added through transformation of raw materials into the finished goods which comes to our home. So finished goods have better advantage and also value that we say. Right? So that's why it is greater in profits, which leads to faster economic growth. That's why secondary sector is very important. In India right now, we're trying to emphasize on homegrown goods, right? home produced material from our own factories made in India. That's why we have programs like Skill India, Startup India and several other programs where we want to make in India concept to come alive and also lead in various aspects. Right? So that's the whole idea we want to develop as manufacturing hub. Right, because it would lead to the path of development. So the whole idea is if you observe these locational factors for industries, which we have talked about in the previous sessions also, for industries, for manufacturing, these seven things are very important. Top is the raw material, which is coming from where? From the primary sector of economy. Then you have power, labor, capital, land, market, transport. All these things needs to come together to actually make 
the secondary sector or the industrial sector work and locate in a particular place right so classification of industries if you see because we are talking about secondary sector and industries lead in them so classification is based on various types so one is on raw material one is on size and one is on ownership three things three words you have to remember raw material size and ownership right so raw material is agro based industries for example it is agriculture produced raw material which is taken for the processing so we have vegetable oil cotton textile dairy product leather industries food processing industries which take raw materials and process them into finished goods then we have mineral based industries we take minerals and produce different objects from it marine based industries so marine resources are proce processed in those industries then you have forest based industries right so these kind of raw material based industries are one type of industry then the second type is based on the size that how big it is how much area does it acquire and how much is its output in output in productivity the size also is there right so it's kind of a scale concept so small scale or large scale industry right then comes the ownership the third one that is who is owning it is it privately owned sector for example tisco reliance right which is in private hands then public sector enterprises like hal sale right so these are public sector units then you have joint sector units like maruti udyog right where you have combination of public and private and then you have cooperative sector as well for example remember the anand milk union limited amul that we already know operation flood and also sudha diary now looking into classification of industries through a flow diagram you can make this flow diagram and learn from this as well if you don't want into the text so it is based on size raw materials output and ownership there are this four classes here right so cottage or household small scale large scale artifacts which is part of the size based classification then in input that is based on raw material you have agro based mineral based chemical based forest based animal based so five types if you see examples are given here you can pause the video and you can note it down for yourself sugar edible oil cotton textile coffee tea rubber is agro right in mineral you have metallic or non metallic minerals for example non metallic is cement and pottery industries then in metallic you have ferrous and non ferrous so iron and steel industry the most famous one and copper aluminum gems and you know other jewelries right those are the non ferrous then further if you see output on the basis of output how you classify so basic is iron and steel industry then you have consumer goods industries like biscuits textiles vehicles for example cars bikes then you have ownership based as we know this is here so this one flow diagram can give you an overview as well that you can practice and learn for the classification of these industries now comes the major industrial regions in the world if you observe this map simply you can find out which areas in the world if you see the east coast and here in this part the great lakes part of us here on the west coast as well then you have this mediterranean area somewhere in europe as well in india as well in other portions in southeast asia as well right in south america some places so largely if you observe this is the major industrial regions of the world on the map which you can mark for yourself and learn about it that which which are the areas which is the example and in india if you observe this is very important to learn this 13 here minor industrial regions and the major industrial region so you have eight major industrial region if you see mumbai pune cluster bangalore tamil nadu region hogli region ahmedabad baroda region then have chota nagpur industrial region visakhapatnam guntur then gurgaon delhi merit region and kollam tiruvananthapuram industrial sector right and minor including these are 13 ones here so if you observe at least these major chunks which you see in the dark these major chunks at least you should remember for indian example all right so now let's look at the case study of iron and steel industry how it works so 8 tons of coal 4 tons of iron ore and 1 ton of limestone it means coal iron ore and limestone combined together gives us 1 ton of steel so to produce steel we need these three resources that's how it works in secondary industries so steel is often called the backbone of modern industry and modern urbanization cities are built on steel that we say almost everything in our everyday life from needle to tools we use of metals mostly of steel right so ships trains trucks autos they are made of steel safety pins to needles to steel machinery steel pipelines transport sector right everything is working on steel so steel is the backbone of economy that we say that's why iron and steel industry becomes really the backbone of manufacturing industries across the world right so what we observe 
look at this particular diagram the major iron ore producing areas in the world will definitely lead in steel production as well so if you see the commercial hubs these are the areas which are iron ore producing areas in the world from russia to us to india to southeast asia also in south africa brazil australia all these places if you observe on the map so you find that their iron ores are deposited and in india iron and steel industry has developed taking advantage of raw materials cheap labor and transport and market that's very important factor so we say these are factors of production right now all important iron and steel producing centers for example bilai durgapur burnpur jamshedpur raurkela bokaro if you observe all of them coming after independence right we had the five year plans which were focused on the growth pole concept that if these iron and steel industries are there then what would they do they would strengthen our economy our cities would bloom and gradually development of the region will happen right so it is spread over four states west bengal jharkhand odisha and chatisgarh and remember bhadravati and vijayanagar in karnataka visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh salem in tamil nadu are other important steel centers utilizing local resources the most famous one if you observe before 1947 was tisco tisco tata iron and steel company and after independence the government took to the initiative to set other iron and steel plants now this is the sketch map of tisco if you have ever been to the place called jamshedpur you'll understand this here so earlier it was called sakshi which was Later renamed as Jamshedpur, right? In 1907, Tisco was started here, and this is the plan map. Here you have steel works, and you have this Suvarna Rekha River, Kharkai River, and the area connected with. Observe here is transportation, the railway line, right? So that's how it was made in that particular location. Now. similar kind of locational advantage if you see is pittsburgh these two rivers if you observe here pittsburgh enjoys the locational advantages in us right and it takes iron ore as long as 1500 kilometers right from minnesota iron mines they get these raw products and then it is processed at pittsburgh right so famous great lakes waterway this is what gives it locational advantage right so everywhere in the world where iron and steel industry is located location raw material and its transportation and circulation becomes really really important right now come to next kind of industry which is cotton textile industry case study so here if you observe weaving cloth from yarn is an ancient art right cotton wool silk jute flax these have been used since ancient times to make make cloth so what happened during colonialism it was now mechanized and industrialized so what happened earlier the cotton textile industry which was running on handmade looms were now converted to power looms first time in britain so it was now running on power it was more mechanized so there comes the industrial revolution from cotton textile industry in 18th century right so india china japan and usa importantly produce the cotton textiles at the most in the world right so if you observe this list here it gives us the countries their ranks in terms of production and also percentage of the world china ranks the top then is india then us pakistan indonesia brazil turkey south korea italy egypt japan so if you observe here this these are the major countries which are producing the cotton textiles muslins of dhaka chinzis of masuli patnam then you have calicoes of calicut gold wrought cotton of burhanpur surat and vadodara were known worldwide for their quality and design these are the famous indian ones remember that right so now if you observed world major cotton textile manufacturing regions on the map there is a pattern these are the areas in us then you have this western europe here industrial revolution then some portions in central asia hugely in india and china if you observe here some portions in south america as well and south africa as well so this is majorly into this manufacturing of cotton textile and Ahmedabad in India in the state of Gujarat remember where in 1859 the first mill was established is also known as Manchester of India because Manchester in UK is very famous for producing the cotton textile right then in Japan Osaka is very famous it's called Manchester of Japan right so these are the places which are the major 
cotton textile producers of the world. And then comes the concept of high technology industry in secondary activity in economy. So high technology or simply high tech industry that we say. What are these? These are based on intensive research and development and advanced scientific and engineering characteristic. For example, professional white collar jobs white collar workers make up large share of the total workforce right the engineering graduates the young minds the tech scientists right and they are highly skilled specialists so they greatly outnumber the actual production that is blue collar workers right so here that typical labor job is not required here skilled labor job of high end is required so robotics are one of the things that are done in assembly line if you observe this diagram here this is a high-tech industry which is producing cars, which is producing machines. So this has overtaken the world in modern science and technology development alongside. So high-tech industries which are regionally concentrated, self-sustained and highly specialized are called technopolis. Now remember this word called technopolis. Technopolis are what? These are the hub or the agglomeration of such industries which are all high-tech. So, for example, Silicon Valley near San Francisco, the very famous Silicon Forest near Seattle are examples of technopolis. All the high-end technocrats and all the meetings and all the world phenomena is taken over by Silicon Valley, right from the Microsoft to Google to you name it, all the high-tech industries are having their headquarters or are having their offices in Silicon Valley, right? So, it becomes really important in today's world that high-tech industries are established. If you observe from YouTube itself to others like HP and several Oracle, Yahoo, Facebook, all of them are there in Silicon Valley if you observe, right? So these are what? These are not based on the labor jobs like other industries. These are skilled white collar labor jobs, softwares, technology, robotics, engineering. That's what it is driven through, right? So that's what we say is high-tech industry and it also falls under the secondary activities in the economy. So most of these industries are dealing in heavy chemical, metal, smelting, textiles, paper, pulp, leather, tanning and create considerable pollution to the environment as we know. It is talking about the all kinds of secondary activities, not just the high tech, right? So high tech industries are the least polluting if you observe out of all the secondary activities, but rest of them definitely have a footprint, right? So disposal of organic waste from these processes are of great concern right now. And manufacturing industries use processes that are associated with these distinct stages in environmental terms. First is raw materials are selected, brought together to manufacturing hub. And then actual manufacturing process has this potential to pollute and produce the waste material. That's where it is produced, not at the raw material end. And then third, there is environmental consideration even after these products are sold with respect to their disposal and possibly recycling. That's why we say in sustainable development, that is reduce, reuse and recycle comes into the picture because as much as our needs are growing, as much industries are booming up. And if we have more manufacturing units, it means we are producing more footprints on the planet, right? So that's how the concept is linked with our carbon footprint analysis as well. So the idea is that secondary sector is the major sector of economy that is also at the same time affecting the environment. That's what is to learn from here. So now, when we have learned about all the concepts related to secondary activities in the economy, various case studies, examples, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different topics of economic geography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning, and don't forget to share the videos with others as well.